OMG, a nuclear bomb. But a nuclear bomb is a walk in the park compared to the total horror I'm about to lay on you. Apocalypse now, but worse. I'm talking about the sixth mass extinction. I know what you're thinking. What were the other five again? Dinosaurs and, hmm. Anyway, fourth, fifth, or sixth mass extinction doesn't sound good. And worryingly, it's already underway, according to climate warriors. Half the species of the planet have been already killed. 50% of them are in danger of extinction. From the savanna to the sea, the world's wildlife is under threat. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. Or could this be more driveling climate nonsense from deranged fanatics, shamelessly distorting facts and making stuff up to grab headlines and upset the kids? I'm Tom Nelson, and this is Gorilla Science. We're off to hell in a handcart, and it's all down to you with your satanic hair dryers and plasma TVs and Chevy Silverados. Thanks to your voracious consumerism, a million species are at risk. I bet you didn't even know there were a million species. This mass extinction is going to happen, they say, because of global warming. Okay, first of all, let's look at how hot it is. The longest instrumental temperature record in the world is the Central England temperature record. It says that, since the end of an exceptionally cold period known as the Little Ice Age, about three or 400 years ago, the world has warmed all of one degree Celsius. And most of that is due to cold nights getting slightly less cold. Let's put that in some perspective. Here's a temperature reconstruction of the last 500 million years. For almost the whole of that period, the Earth was much, much warmer than it is now. When did all the cuddly mammals evolve, including us humans? They evolved over the past 50 million years. Here are temperatures over the last 50 million years. Where are we? We're down here. In other words, the animals that inhabit the world today evolved and thrived in a time that was far warmer than today. We're currently in an ice age, by the way. It's called the Late Cenozoic Ice Age. Back in the age of the dinosaurs, the Earth was as much as 20 degrees Celsius warmer than now, and it was absolutely teeming with life. Ask yourself this, where on Earth today do species thrive best? The warm bits or the cold bits? In the cold Antarctic, you've got penguins and seals and not a lot else. In our tropical savannas and forests, you can't move for insects and lizards and sloths and zebras and elephants and giraffes and birds and crocs and wild dogs and snakes and monkeys and cats and literally countless other species, many of which haven't even a name. There are in fact about 21,000 species living in the Arctic, but at the equator, there are so many millions, biologists can't even put a vague number on it. About half of the world's plant and animal species live in tropical rainforests. And indeed, most species on Earth evolved in the tropics, including humans. What about the CO2 levels? That's the gas that's supposed to be causing all the trouble. Here's atmospheric CO2 over the last 550 million years. We are way, way down here. For almost all that time, CO2 levels have been far, far higher than now, several times as much. The result of higher CO2 levels was a far, far greener planet. CO2 is plant food, remember, and more CO2 meant a greater flourishing of life. Both higher CO2 levels and a warmer world are great for life. In Earth's long history, species die out when it gets cold and when CO2 levels are low. Estimates of how many species there are on Earth vary enormously, extending into the tens of millions. And indeed, new species are evolving all the time. Scientists identify several new ones every year. Species do go extinct both naturally and due to human action, but in very small numbers, and it has nothing to do with climate. There was an increase in the number of extinctions due to humans in the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, not because of climate, but because human civilization expanded into new areas. But since the early 20th century, the rate of extinctions has not been rising. Far from it. The number has been falling dramatically. In the past 50 years, what species have gone extinct? The Japanese sea lion was finally declared extinct, but in fact had been hunted out of existence in the early 20th century. An obscure species of bat found on Christmas Island went extinct for reasons no one knows, and possibly a kind of rat found only on one tiny island, Bramble Cave, or at least scientists laid traps for them and couldn't catch any. 
Even the BBC reports that, according to data from the International Union for Conservation of Nature, only one animal has been definitely identified as having gone extinct since 2000. It was a mollusk. Quite some way from a mass extinction event. The real question is, why are species no longer disappearing? The first reason is a steep decline in poaching. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, whaling was a huge industry, but whale oil has long since been replaced by petroleum, and we understand so much better the perils of overfishing and overhunting. The hunting of whales has fallen dramatically since the 1970s. As a result, sightings of blue whales, for example, have increased more than eightfold, and the same goes for other forms of wildlife. The number of black rhinos has more than doubled in the last 20 years, as has the number of Indian tigers. In recent decades, the number of mountain gorillas has quadrupled. The polar bear population has quadrupled. The other thing that has benefited wildlife over the past 100 years is development of modern scientific agriculture. Over time, farmers have learned to vastly increase productivity with the help of inorganic fertilizer to enrich the soil, herbicides to keep weeds at bay, pesticides to protect crops from insects, and GM seeds for healthier, more resistant crops. The Greens hate all these and would have them banned, but it's been fantastic for wildlife. Why? Because it means we grow so much more food on so much less land, leaving ever more room for wildlife habitats. For example, in Europe, there's been a huge increase in the population in the last century, and yet, incredibly, there's more than a third again more trees in Europe today than there was at the end of World War II. As a result of this, in Europe, there's been a spectacular increase in the population of wildlife across the board. The Greens hate modern scientific agriculture, but animals absolutely love it. The parts of the world where wildlife is most under risk are not the modern industrial capitalist bit, but rather the poor pre-industrial regions like Africa, where the number of lions, for example, is still in decline. But none of this has anything to do with climate. The claim of climate alarmists that we are facing a mass extinction event is frankly surreal. To repeat, the only animal to have definitely gone extinct in the last quarter of a century is a mollusk. What is breathtaking about climate alarmists is how shameless they are in spreading the most ridiculous lies. The only extinction we need to worry about is that of scientific honesty at the hands of hysterical climate zealots who will say anything to further their cause. I'm Tom Nelson, and this is Gorilla Science.